Hey everybody, welcome to my follow-up video on flight planning in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And today I'm going to show you how to plan a real-world IFR flight. Warm welcome to the Sim Hanger. my name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. The information in this video applies equally to Xbox and PC users. I have assumed that you've got a basic understanding of flight planning and how to do it within Microsoft Flight Simulator. If that's not the case, then check out this video, link in the notes below. In real-world aviation, flight planning is a complex and expensive subject. But today I'm going to do my best to keep it simple and straightforward. So from time to time I may make some generalizations. Certain rules and regulations do vary depending on where in the world you are. This tutorial is designed as the initial building blocks on which you can build your more advanced IFR and VFR flight planning. During the video I'll make reference to various third parties and resources. If you have access to a PC then it's straightforward. If you don't then I recommend via your Xbox Series S or X you use Microsoft Edge or your preferred search engine as some browsers don't always display the information correctly. Where appropriate links to all the third party sites in the notes below the video. To kick off with let's have a look at some of the basic rules we'll be complying with during our flight planning. Depending on the direction that you're flying, aircraft fly at different altitudes. This is a safety measure to ensure aircraft separation, as indicated above. So if we're flying between 0 and 179 degrees, we would be at odd levels, such as flight level 7,000 feet, 13,000 feet, or 23,000 feet. Conversely, flying 180 to 359 degrees, we'd be flying at even levels. That may be 6,000 feet, 26,000 feet, or 36,000 feet, and so on. That's why good flight planning dictates we should avoid a zigzag type of flight plan, involving significant changes in direction and flight level changes. It just creates more opportunity for error. If you're flying VFR, we adopt the same principle in terms of odd and even flight levels. The only difference is for VFR, we add 500 feet. So if I was flying IFR eastbound, I could fly at 9,000 feet. If it's VFR, I'd have to choose a flight level of 7,500 feet or 9,500. If we take a look at skyvector.com, we'll see there's different maps for different types of flights. VFR planning is not restricted by predefined routes, as we effectively fly place to place, using visual references as a guide to stay on track. This is a VFR map, and Skyvector is used by real-world pilots. Turning now to the IFR maps, there are two. There's the world low-level routes and the world high-level routes. This is a low-level, and this is high-level. The difference is not determined by the type of aircraft you fly, but the altitude. As a general guide, low altitude airways are used at 19,500 feet and below. Anything above that, it's high altitude airways. And these airways are effectively roads in the sky. Looking at the map, we can see there's a number of different symbols. L179 has no arrows, which means flight along that route in either direction. Whereas N872 and N873 are one-way traffic only. Air travel only in the direction of the arrows. This would be helpful if you were manually planning your own flight route. In some parts of the world, mainly the States, you will find different types of maps. We have the standard VFR, low altitude and high altitude, but they also have a number of en route maps. And these are provided for additional information and more detail. These sectional maps can also be used for flying through defined airspaces. An essential part of flight planning is knowing which runway to use for both landing and takeoff. This is especially important if there's no ATC. Looking at this airport, we see that the wind is 340 degrees at 4 knots. Note the way that wind is reported. It's blowing from 340 degrees. Pilots always want to take off into the wind, as this will provide maximum lift. So in this example, it's not difficult to determine that the departure runway is 33. If, on the other hand, we had the wind change direction to 240 degrees at 6, this would necessitate a change of runway. The closest to it would be runway 22, 22. Good pilots always try and reduce as much as possible the amount of crosswind on takeoff. 
For our flight planning activities, we need to head to the world map. And if you're following along, I'm in the default Airbus A320neo. The first step is to make sure we've got the information we need on the world map. So we open up the filters option. Now most of the options are not going to have a big impact on what we plan. And I've stuck with the satellite view, but what is important under navigation, I've got air spaces off, navates on, and most importantly fix and RNAV position on. And that's important because we're going to be planning an IFR flight. Unlike VFR, IFR flights will use various navigational and GPS fixes and positions to chart the route. Once that's set, we can start setting up our flight plan. Flight planning is determining how we get from A to B. And if you're interested in that being something that's representative of planning in the real world, then there's a couple of aspects within the flight planning that we need to be aware of. Let's take a quick look. In terms of the route itself, as we've already seen, we need to ensure we follow the respective airways at an appropriate altitude that conforms to the regulations. And we do all this to maintain aircraft safety. But that's not just restricted to the route. At most of the bigger or busier airports, they have a number of predefined routes for departing the airport and proceeding to your first fixed point on your route. And there'll be different departure routes for different runways. We call these SIDs or Standard Instrument Departures. The small airports may not have a SID or standard instrument departure, and in that case typically you'll find something like fly runway heading to 2,000 feet and so on. Today our chosen airport does have a standard instrument departure. And for the busier or larger airports, unsurprisingly, there's also an arrival procedure, a standard terminal arrival or star that will define how we approach the airport and once again often governed by set altitudes. Stars will often start from a number of predefined points which we need to bear in mind when planning our route to ensure our route takes us to one of those points. The star will define a path to the airport and bring us to a point where we can engage ILS for our final controlled approach. So in summary we've got our route we have a SID on departure and a star on arrival and then ILS. It sounds more complicated than it is and Microsoft Flight Simulator can help us here. Let's jump back into SIM. Let's start planning our route and we do that by first of all picking our departure point and I've picked Gatwick, Echo Golf, Kilo Kilo in the UK. And note here it has given us an automatic runway assignment runway 26L or 26 left. You could of course just start at a gate, cold and dark, but for expediency for this tutorial I'll start on the runway. And now you can do your own check to make sure the runway is the right one. Note on the label on the world map, Echo Golf Kilo Kilo, it's showing wind 220 degrees at 5 knots. If unsure you can click on the label and zoom to details. I'm aware that Gatwick only has one operational runway, so in this case I know 26 left is the correct runway, so I'm happy with that. Now let's select our arrival airport. I'm going to find my airport by typing in the ICAO code Echo Delta Delta Sierra Stuttgart in Germany. It's assigned us to runway 7 and wind is 130 degrees at 2 knots. Click on the label and the runway information comes up on the right hand side. It's a single runway, so runway 7 is correct. 70 degrees is closer to 130 degrees, the wind direction, than 250 degrees. Now at this point a couple of things to note. As soon as we entered our departure information a new line has appeared with the tab Navlog and our beginning and ending points, as well as an options menu below the aircraft icon. And it has defaulted to direct GPS. In other words, a direct route from Gatwick to Stuttgart. But if we click on it, we see a number of other options appear. And it's here where Microsoft Flight Simulator can help us considerably with our flight planning. Other than direct GPS, we can choose VOR. And note along the Navlog bar, all the various different VOR stations are shown. But today we're more interested in IFR flying. And we have two options, low and high altitude airways. And once again, our navigational points have changed. In addition to various VORs, we're also using multiple nav fixes to plot our route from Gatwick to Stuttgart. 
We've now changed to high altitude airways, which is more realistic for something like the A320. And once again, the route details have changed. You will also note as soon as we change to IFR, a number of new options are now available. For Gatwick, we've got our departures, which is our SID, Standard Instrument Departures. And for Stuttgart, our arrivals, our STAR, and Approach, ILS. And these options will allow us to complete our flight planning. At this point, of course, you can manually make changes to the flight plan as needed. And as shown in my earlier video, Flight Planning Getting Started. If we go across to the Departures box and click on that, it will display all the standard instrument departure routes that are available for that particular airport, for all the runways. Gatwick does have two runways, but only one I believe is active. The main question now is which one do we choose? We know we're departing runway 26L, so only those departures with 26L can be selected. And even so, there are multiple options available. The reason there are multiple SIDs is they're designed to give you an expedient and safe route away from the airport, but depending whether you're heading north, south, east or west. So you have multiple different SIDs from the same runway. Within Microsoft Flight Simulate, if you click on a SID and it's not practical, nothing will happen. It will not insert the SID. At this point, you have a number of options. You can just click through the various standard instrument departures until you find one that works for you and for your route. Here I've chosen the MIMFO One Mic departure. And that seems to work fairly well and line up with my route fairly nicely but it will accept some departures that are not necessarily that practical. I've chosen the LAM 6M departure. It's accepted it, but again, you can see where it's taking me. Not very practical and not real world. I'm going to change back to my previous departures that seem more practical, but it's at this point in the flight planning where you're going to need to refer to third party information to help you determine the best standard instrument departure Microsoft Flight Simulator currently will not help you choose your departure or arrival. Let's go ahead and complete our flight planning. Then we'll have a look at various options for finding out the information you need. We're now planning our arrival into Stuttgart. My last waypoint fix before the airport is Lamgo. If you're lucky, then the star will have the same name. And we know it's runway 7. So let's have a look at the standard terminal arrivals that are available to us. I'm paging down looking for Lamgo, but no luck. So once again, it's a matter of trial and error or finding the information elsewhere and then putting it into the sim. I happen to know the approach into Stuttgart is the Batso 2 Alpha, runway 07. I've now got my approach. My last fixed point before the airport is Lima Brava Uniform. It's a VOR. And I now have two options. I can either go for an ILS approach or I can leave the flight plan as it is and go for vectors for a visual approach runway 07. In this case, I'm going to choose an ILS approach. And normally this would be the correct thing to do in something like the Airbus 320. My approach option is currently set to automatic. I'm going to change that to ILS 07. And to my flight plan now, from Lima Brava Uniform, it has provided fix or GPS positions to align me straight up with the runway, which would allow me to engage ILS in my final approach. Again, just to highlight the importance of getting the correct star. I've now changed the star and we can see the crazy approach that it's given us and the more difficult approach for the ILS runway 07. So we've been able to do most of our flight planning in Microsoft Flight Simulator, but we're not quite finished yet. We may want to check the waypoints along the way and any altitudes, as well as fix our cruising altitude for the flight. For that, we go to Navlog, and here we can set our cruise altitude. From what we've learnt already, we know it has to be an odd number, but for a short route like this, 39,000 feet is too high in my opinion. We can see from the line graph on the top, there's almost no cruise and we'd be burning fuel unnecessarily. So I'm going to change that to something I feel is a little bit more realistic. 29,000 feet seems more practical. Hit enter and it adjusts accordingly. We can now run our mouse over the points on the graph or just scroll up and down on the nav log itself. Just to check that we're happy with all the various entries. And we could also take note of various altitudes at various waypoints. 
Once we're happy with the flight plan, well, we can go ahead and save. We do this by choosing the Load Stroke Save option and then save. You can give it any name you want. I just use the ICAO codes, so it's EGKK, EDDS and A320. And I save it as a .pln file so I can use it with any aircraft. And we've completed our first IFR flight plan. Having a flight plan done before you start your flight automatically loads that flight plan into your aircraft. We can see it displayed there on the secondary display panel. This applies to most default and some third-party aircraft. We can also get further information by going to the nav log. Whilst I acknowledge the information here on the nav log is limited, it's still useful. Just would be nice to have altitude information as well. Now for some of you, this may be as far as you want to take the flight planning. And if so, that's okay. But for those that want more accuracy and detail, well, we need to look at third-party applications. Let's do that now. Simbrief is a tool that runs in your browser, and it's free. It's owned by Navigraph, a company well known for its charts. So you do need to register, but it's very powerful. Let's go to Dispatch and create a new flight plan. Now there's a huge amount of detail that can be added, but let's just look at the basics. It's simple and straightforward. Enter your departure and arrival airports, e.g. KK and EDDS. There's an option for an alternative. I'm going to change that to EDDF, which is Frankfurt. And I can now choose from a drop-down list my aircraft type. Doesn't have the A320neo, but the a 320 200s close enough. Choosing the aircraft ensures that weight and fuel calculations are done correctly. It uses live meta information so the departure and arrival runway are correct. You can let it auto-assign altitude or you can change it yourself. We did our flight plan for 29,000, so I'm going to put in 29,000. You have the option to add passenger weights and cargo weights and so on. I'm not going to bother with that now, I'm going to keep it simple. And here you can see it's automatically calculated a route which is pretty close to the one we created in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If available, it will also show you other valid routes between Gatwick and Stuttgart. I'm going to stick with the top one as it's the one that's closest to what we plan. Before continuing, there's further assistance available. In the highlighted bar are a number of reference sites. One is Sky Vector. Let's go and have a look at that. And here we can see it's put our route into Sky Vector and also detailed the flight plan. Let's go on and give one more a test. And I've chosen Flight Aware for those that want absolute accuracy. There's no schedule of flights between Gatwick and Stuttgart, unfortunately, but I can go back to the home page. I'm going to put in EGLL Heathrow and Stuttgart. Let's see if there's any real world schedule flights. And there they are. So if you want to, you can even use real world call signs, airlines and dispatch times and so on. But that's too much detail for now. Let's go and generate a flight. And this now will confirm and generate the full flight plan. It's a quick process and only takes a few seconds. And here is our full flight plan with all sorts of useful information. You can zoom in on the map and here you can see the alternative to Frankfurt's also being plotted. If we page down a little bit further in terms of the flight plan, we can see detailed fuel information can be in pounds or kgs and you can enter this into the sim just before your departure and you'll have a real world fuel load on board. Our flight route is shown in full detail but one of the other fantastic strengths of a package such as this is we can now save the flight plan and we can do so in multiple formats. The one we're interested in today is FS2020. Click download, save it where you want to and you can load that directly into Microsoft Flight Simulator. Your flight planning's done. And 99 times out of 100, it will have chosen the correct star and SID. Designed for those that fly online, VATSIM is a great resource. Once again, you do have to register. And you should only do so if you intend to fly online. But under resources, they have access to worldwide airport charts, as well as documentation and other training information. This is Stuttgart, for example. And in addition to the airport layout, we can get SID and STAR information. Let's have a look at this STAR. And this shows us all the available STARs available for Stuttgart. And you'll remember we chose the Betso 2 Alpha. 
a great resource for pilots. Another great resource is IVAO, or the International Virtual Aviation Organization, again designed for those pilots flying online. And as per VATSIM, they have a wide range of different resources available, including training, charts, and so on. Worth a look. Should be noted, and as far as I'm aware, for Xbox users, you can't currently fly online with VATSIM and IVAO. Hopefully that compatibility will be coming sometime in the future. Another free source of information is OpenNav. They have a fairly wide coverage of most airports, including SIDS and STARS and so on. Just a note, in my experience, quite a few of the charts are somewhat out of date, but nonetheless a useful resource. For those that want accuracy and the most up-to-date information, then a very popular choice is Navigraph charts. But unlike the ones that we've looked at so far, this is payware on a monthly or annual subscription. Further details in terms of pricing can be found on their site. Links in the notes below. A monthly subscription to Navigraph allows you access to that information on the computer, on your mobile device such as your tablet, be it Apple or Android based. It's the one that I currently use. And the big benefit for me is because I fly a lot in VR, access to the charts etc. is available in SIM in a panel. So I'm on Navigraph on my computer, on my desktop. I've selected Gatwick and I can now have access to any information that I require, including charts for any standard instrument departure or arrival. I've now switched tab to the taxi and I can look at the parking positions if I want to, or I can select the airport and get an overview of the taxiways and so on. Now back in SIM and flying, I can access the Navigraph information through the top toolbar. I click on that, it opens up, and not only does it show my route, but where I am on that route. Very nice feature. All the various fixes on my route are shown above, and I can click on any one of those to bring up details. Let's have a quick look at the ILS approach for Stuttgart before we get there. I'm going to click on the BAGSO arrival. The chart automatically changes. I can now have a look at the published procedure for BAGSO to Alpha arrival. And once I get there again, I'll be able to monitor and see my point along the route. And it works great in VR as well. For the serious airline simmer, this is a must-have. Planning VFR or IFR is one thing, but flying it is another. Available on Xbox and PC. And from FS Academy, the company that has brought the inbuilt training tutorials for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Check out my initial review videos on VFR, IFR, and their A320 jetliner, and brought to you by an airliner captain. I'm also aware they're on sale at the moment to the 20th of December, so worth a look. And once again, links to my review videos in the notes below. Well, I hope that the information in this tutorial has given you enough information to get you up and away. Be you an airline pilot, twin engine prop, or a Cessna 152. You can now plan your route and if you want to, make it real world as well. Again, I need to highlight before closing off that some of the regulations in different parts of the world does vary. So it's best that you check what local regulations apply. Don't forget to subscribe if you want more news, information and tutorials on Microsoft Flight Simulator. And if you found it useful, give it a thumbs up. It does help the channel. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'll see you soon. Stay safe and bye for now.